All right, metalheads, this is DJ Rem, live with the Hard Ponies from San Francisco, California. What's going on, guys? Hey, what's up? What's up, Rem? How's it going? I am doing great. I'm doing great. How's uh, how's the weather out there? That's being weird. San Francisco, you know, it's, uh, it's trying to scald us today, but yesterday it was trying to freeze me to death, so, you know. But it's you know it's all right. We never really get winter here, so we're not too too unhappy about that. So what's going on with you guys right now? What's uh, you guys got gigs lined up? Uh, we got next show coming up. Will be December second. It's a Friday night. A place called Grant and Green in San Francisco. Um, playing with a couple bands. We got uh, the Deep Valley Girls from L.A. and then a, uh, a pop punk band that's playing with us called the Started It's Pretty good guys. So. That should be fun, and there's no cover, so anybody that's in the Bay Area, Hard Ponies, started at Steep Valley at Grant and Green, December 2nd. Surrounded by pizza. Surrounded by pizza. You'll be tripping on pizza. You'll have cheese on the bottom of your shoes. And we also have We also have this album that you've been playing, grateful that you've been playing that on the air, that we're trying to promote and throw out there and see what happens with it. Very cool. Now I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of still stuck on the the name of that one band. The uh, was it the Deep Valley Girls? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think they have. Uh, and you know, I may be mis saying it too. I don't remember offhand now if it was. I think it's, it's just, just Deep Valley. It's just Deep Valley. Okay. I think they think the guy who was talking to me about it because. Uh, just referred to them as the Deep Valley Girls. He probably meant the girls from the band Deep Valley. So sorry, I'm probably saying that wrong. I think the band is just is called it Deep, Deep Valley. Or Deep? Like D-E-A-P. It's Deep, but it's D E A P. Yeah, that's yeah. a great name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving on. All right. I, I tend to get sidetracked easily. Yeah, me too. It's <laughs> ADD. So, um, hey, hey, your buddy Cam's in the chat, so he's hanging out listening. What's up, Cam? What's up, Cam? We, uh, I see our friend Jerry's listening, too, from... Uh, uh, there we go. I, I wanted to give a shout-out to them anyway, so now's a perfect time. Uh, Cam was actually the guy who turned me on to Metalhead Radio. Uh, him and my buddy Jay play in a band called Rock and Roll Villain Society. Probably no strangers to Metalhead listeners. And, uh, you know, great band. I used to play with those guys a long time ago. Uh, it's not that long ago. Yeah, but... Uh, uh, so shout out to them They're still out there Doing their thing And they've got some uh, Pretty good discs out That was my whole wow. shout out I You know <laughs> That was it Okay so what is going on With you guys right now Uh well Some pizza eating And uh, <laughs> And then uh, Now uh, Working on some new material And Trying to promote the record And Um gearing up to play a little more so we've got the uh, I think the only gig that's actually on the docket right now is the December 2nd show uh, so it should be fun we played one last month for our, our boy Danny here's birthday our guitar player so that was fun uh, had some of our friends on that one so it was a good time you know everybody knew each other and trying to get the album out <laughs> <laughs> Rob do you have something to say about that? Is that you? I'm trying <laughs> to get the album out you're, you're just a uh, Rob has one mission. He has That's a one-track mission. Where can you get that album, Rob? <laughs> yeah, tell them where they can get the get the album, Rob. Yeah, where can we buy this album, man? CD Baby. iTunes. It's up on iTunes. CD Baby. Or give Rob a call. Or give or me a give call. Rob a call. <laughs> or just, his, swing, just yeah. swing by his house. Yeah, yeah any time Here's of the day address. or night, you can go by Rob's house. Uh, but no, any it, day or night. Uh, for download, it is up on iTunes. You can't get it on CD Baby. Um, I don't know who listens in terms, you know, if... if uh, if you work in a store and you're a buyer at a store, you can actually get it through Revolver USA is distributing it uh, as far as that goes. Um, I think a handful of stores already do have it, um, but, yeah, that's where they can get it. Um, and Bandcamp.com is another place you can get the download for Reverb it. Reverb Nation. And Reverb Nation. Although, they, does Reverb Nation let you download it? I'm not just, sure. I think you can. Uh, I think you can just hear it there, actually. <laughs> you can hear it on our Facebook. Or on the Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. But if you, if you want your own copy to love and, and cherish, which is, then, you know, which is what Rob yeah. wants. Oh, I have plenty of them. Oh, you have? <laughs> you, have oh, you want some more, buy. Rob? Do you want another one? <laughs> I'll sell you one. So, so do you guys all carry around, like, boxes of them in your trunk or what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and, uh, yeah. Yes. You know, when, I, when I'm hitting up the, like, the PTA luncheons and I'm trying to, like, you know, 
ch- catch the soccer mom's eyes. I'm like, you know, flashing the CD out. I'm like, you remember these okay, compact uh, discs? Come on. You ever, get stuck, in, you, uh, you ever <laughs> get stuck in snow and you need something to wedge under the back tire to get you out? <laughs> You're a hero. It's a great, yeah, exactly. You can be a lifesaver with that. Works harder than tire chains. You know, multi-purpose. Okay, so let's go around. Can you guys go around the room and uh, introduce yourselves and what your spots in the band are? Sure. I'll I'll start with you. Jim Clenny, I play drums. I'm Rob Brody, I play bass. (laughs) Now I I wanted to think of something funny to say that I, you know, lipstick, (laughs) with all the Motley Crue things that used to be lipstick, Styling and profiling, and yeah. I'm Lance. Yeah. I do the uh, the yelling and the jumping around, and, uh, and, uh, and the drinking. And the drinking. I'm the designated drinker for the band. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm Daniel, and the designated asshole slash guitarist of the band. That was your first cuss. That was yes. your first. We were I got not one taking, in. Not taking full in. advantage of the internet radio freedom to say whatever we fucking want. Is that am, am I correct on that? <laughs> Goddamn straight. All right, that's what I like Excellent. to hear. <laughs> so, um, how long have you guys all been together? It's we're, well, not, <laughs> we're we're still open. We still see other people, but <laughs> no, we um, we we were together once before. We we actually had been in a band together. Uh, and I almost don't want to say how long ago, uh, but roughly 20 years ago, and we did a stretch from 89 to 91, and the four of us were the, the core band. Uh, we had a little rotation on the drum seat, but I think Jim was uh, had the longest tenure. He, has, he holds the record. Um, but uh, we got back together in 2010, did a couple reunion shows with no real plan to do anything besides that, and you know, it just seemed like too much fun not to keep doing. So, recorded an album in the winter. Yeah, did so. Yeah, did the album, put the album down in the winter. Um, yeah, no, nothing. Back. Nothing keeps a rock band together like debt. Yeah. <laughs> so, I you decided. Be- I decided to put us in debt <laughs> just to keep the band going. That's right, because we kind of hate each other, so we have to be <laughs> locked locked together by some kind of. You know, responsibilities. Well, so. we're going to be together a long time. That at seven dollars a gig, it's going to uh, take a while. <laughs> yeah, that, back in the nineties, though, we we did a bunch of shows, but we really didn't record. So when we got back together, we figured put a lot of the old songs, write a few new ones, and kind of finally do it, so to speak. Yeah. And to, to give some people background, because I mean, I'm sure a lot of people listening to the interview will not have heard the band, except if they tuned in a few minutes early and got to hear Psycho Doll. Um, so we're basically more of a hard rock band. Um, there's metal elements to it. We all grew up on metal. Um, you know, Sabbath, Priest, Motorhead, the usual suspects. Um, but the uh, the era we came up in and the sound that we do is closer to like, a, you know, we've got some punk in it with like Ramones and Dead Boys, but like a Guns N' Roses kind of sound too. So it's, you know, uh, it's not Norwegian black metal. Uh, it's not, you know, which I love, but it's not, you know, that's not what we do. Um, yeah, I think I remember. To, I think I remember when you sent the songs. You're like, are these going to be heavy enough for you? Right. Exactly. <laughs> I was kind of like, well, you know, they're not all metal per se. There's a few songs on there where you can definitely hear the Sabbath riffs, and you know, ACDC. you get the ACDC, the ACDC sound. So. Cool. It you know, depends on the definition. Some people will call ACDC metal, and some people will just call ACDC a rock band. I figure you'd do the same thing with us, you know. Well, it's it's real simple. If if you, if a band kicks ass, we we'll play them. And guess what? You, you fell into that category. So here we are. Awesome. <laughs> guess what? Can we quote guess you? Guess what, Rob? Pick up your CD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your check is in the mail. So you owe me. You owe me seven bucks. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think even over the like the twenty years span, like we kind of just stayed true to what we were doing even back, like in the early nineties too. Like we never really tried to go with the flavor of the of the month when it came to like either the, like the Guns N' Roses or the or the grunge when that kicked in. So yeah, I mean it was kind of thing. Like I think most bands do this, you know. Like so I think some bands try to target a certain thing, but. We all just liked a lot of different stuff, and you know, we all have our common influences. But then we all have stuff that we like. You know, Jim, I think, was the one who was the most fond of the music 
of the day at that time. Uh, Jim is the youngest of us, so, like, at the time, like, a lot of the stuff, like, uh, just, like, a lot of the hair metal bands and stuff, that, like, not so much hair metal in your case, but, like, a lot of the more commercial, Red, you know... All that stuff. Yeah, I mean, Eli, you kind of dug deep for some of those, like, Blue Murder and... You know, Jim had a, a taste for that kind of stuff that maybe the rest of us were not as into. Um, but then, you know, we all grew up with with the typical, you know, Sabbath, Rainbow, Deep Purple, uh, Iron Maiden. Um, I think Danny too liked uh, was was probably the one that liked more of the like punk and new wave influences at the time. I, mean, I was pretty huge on the Ramones, but that was maybe as far as it went at the time. And the and the old New York Dolls or the Stooges. Stooges, but, you know, Melvin's. But Danny was, you know, really like. Uh, yeah, I, know. my my first album was uh, like I think it was Kiss Destroyer, and then Devo. Are we not men? And then Gary Newman, and then it just kind of like spiraled out from there. So if you put Kiss and Gary Newman together, that's when you get the hard pony. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Paul Stanley two way army. Right. Well, <laughs> with uh, with the side of Blue Murder. <laughs> The, the thing I like about you guys, and, and the thing I'm always looking for, I'm always looking for bands that don't sound like everybody else, that have a unique sound and style, and I thought you guys did, so I think you guys... Thank you, yeah, I appreciate you. that. Thanks, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, and you know, it, it, I think that happens just by accident in a way, like you're just, you know, unless you're targeting one specific thing and everyone in the band is like, well, we all just love Metallica, and we just want to sound like Metallica, you know, then that's what you get, right? You get probably a bad, a bad imitation of Metallica. Um, but that's the feedback we've heard: is is people, you know, with a lot of these songs we're playing, we wrote twenty some odd years ago, and it sounds fresh again to people. They're not getting it in the clubs. They're not hearing it uh, anywhere. I mean, the music scene's a whole different place now, anyway. But they're not hearing this kind of stuff, and it's it sounds good to them again. When they see the live show and they see Lance perform like a front man performs, as opposed to a, a guy standing there doing his thing, it's refreshing to them. It's something new again. So that's that's been a really positive thing for us to get feedback on. Okay, so exactly. So you guys have been around for a while. What's the what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you at a show? <laughs> <laughs> You really want to go there? Let's see. <laughs> wow. I would love to go there. <laughs> I like mo- most of the people that would be involved in any of these stories. I think I still know most of them. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I got to be careful. Who's you? Know, what angry phone call do I want to get from who? Um, well, he said show, not after show. So all right. Well, I mean, there's different. Uh, here's a. Good, I hope maybe the guy sitting next to me is going to kill me on this one. But I really had a, uh, an enjoyable time. This club that we used to go to. The, uh, we used to play. All the guys we knew used to play. It was a, just a big place for bands to play in the uh, in the Bay Area at the time. Uh, there was a night, and I'm not going to say the name of the club either. <laughs> but one night we went, and we we're just kind of drunk and grumpy, kinda, just kind of grumpy. So we're you know we're like, all right, well we're not going to watch the band, and we're not going to socialize. We're just going to stand at the bar, and we're just going to drink. And so Rob and I sidle up to the bar, and uh, we've decided that. We're also it's packed, so we're packed in, so no one can really see, you know, below your chest. And uh, so we've decided also that we're not <laughs> that we're not going to leave to go to the bathroom. So anytime we have to pee, it's just because we're right up against the bar. You just whip it out and go on the bar. Uh, so at some point, Rob really? goes, really? <laughs> "What are you looking at me for?" So he's, he, Rob's like at one point, he's like, "You know what? I am going to go to the restroom." I was like, "All right," and he. Opens up the straw dispenser, sticks his hand, <laughs> just pulls out a big. You want me to stop with this story? <laughs> You're too he deep in now. Straws. Why it gotta be about me? I, don't, I didn't do it. It wasn't. I'm sure you have stories about me. <laughs> he comes back with the straws, and they've all been someplace unpleasant. Uh, and he puts them back in the dispenser, and that's how we spend the rest of the night: is watching people come up for drinks and. Putting straws in their drinks and fucking all. So, uh, <laughs> gee, your hair smells terrific. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, okay, okay. Everyone. And I was just going to talk yeah. about the time Lance decided to stage dive off the stage 
and then the whole the crowd opened up. <laughs> so we jumped off the stage and hit the ground. I wasn't going to go into oh, right. <laughs> we've had a lot of, a lot of but... Spinal Tap moments where Rob got his boot stuck in a grate. Yeah, right. The yeah. Omni one. A few <laughs> tripping, and... and I got to watch the that try to get pulled out during a song. All right. Being on stage with Lance is always entertaining because you never know when your uh, yes. cord's going to fly out of the amp. He's all right, or the concussion. The, uh, yeah, <laughs> getting head butted or pushed or thrown or. And it's making it sound like a hardcore show now, but it's uh, just really that I'm I'm clumsy. <laughs> is what it, I'm, like, I'm energetic and I'm clumsy, so you know that happens. Um, and usually it ends up on Rob for some reason. I either knock his bass out of tune or crack his nose with my skull or something. Yeah. You know, so there's there's that. <laughs> okay, so this question is for everybody but Lance. How about that? <laughs> what you got? The rest of you guys, tell me something that we would that nobody knows about Lance. <laughs> Uh, oh man, where do you start with that? Um, I've known Lance since kindergarten, so I mean, I can dig up some old dirt. <laughs> he eats his boogers. <laughs> he likes the taste of. You said something nobody Still? knows. Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's post that on Facebook. Nobody knows. Of, everybody knows everything about you. That's kind of true. Uh, yeah, yeah. Lance, Lance isn't one to like. He's just like. That's what you get, Manilow. Uh, yeah. Your session with Barry Manilow. I love yes. Barry Manilow. <laughs> yeah, well, that, again, not a, not a secret. But I we all, I mean, all over Facebook, all the Olivia Newton John songs. I mean, I, I can't, I can't Spotify. speak for Jim, but like, I mean, this, that's kind of we grew up on soft AM rock. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, no, Jim Saini owns the Mellow Rock collection. Yeah. I've got every, yeah. I got the top of one hundred songs from every year from the mid '60s to the '80s. So I was the yeah. Lance was begging me for some. Yeah, you got to burn some of that for AM gold. Are we? Is it just the, did the screen just go? Or yeah. No. yeah, it's just the screen. I think you still there, huh, Ram? Yep, sure am. Cool, okay. cool. Um, technology foiled us. Yeah. Like, the screen went black. What's? I'm typing into the Google and I don't know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's hard to say. That's a hard answer. A hard question to answer. Just because um, I mean, the night like I like the fact that I've known these guys like pretty much since childhood. Um, there, are, there aren't a lot of secrets. So, I mean, and I think most of the friends that know the band and followed the band for so long too, just they, they're kind of included in the joke, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. I mean, yeah, that's... I guess it comes down to like I kind of don't always get the concept of guilty pleasure when people are like, "Oh, I like this," but I don't, you know, never admit it to anybody or right. kind of like, you know, if I like it, I like it. You know, I'm like, you know. Uh, I figure if I was that embarrassed by it, I probably wouldn't like it. Maybe. I don't know. And it's the same thing about personal habits. <laughs> Maybe Ross, too forthcoming. Tell everybody about the uh, time when he was in bed with the <laughs> CBA and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> some of your guys' um, what kind of your favorite bands right now that are out there? Someone else want to start because wow. I'm hogging it again? No. Uh, I'm glad you're hogging it. <laughs> uh, I'm such a I'm such a oh, I, I stick to just old habits. I keep listening to the same stuff I've been listening to for like the last 20 years. Um, new bands? Danko Jones? Yeah, I mean, there's. Here's a guilty pleasure. I, I like Arcade Fire for some reason. This turned me on. The Suburbs was a good record. The thing I was surprised it actually won the Grammy for best yeah, record. Like I, I think it's the first time a record I liked had won the, the <coughs> best record Grammy for. Yeah, like I saw uh, I saw the Kills at the Fillmore and like they were awesome. Yeah. That guitar player just crushes. For uh, heavy stuff now, Shrine Builder is one of my favorites. Um, it's a Kind of a, a super group for like underground metal guys. So Wino's in it. Uh, 
Scott Kelly from Neurosis is in oh, wow. it. Dale Prover from the Melvins is on drums. Um, and, uh, yeah, what's his name? Oh, guy. The other guy that was in Sleep. Al. Al Cisneros on the, on bass. So just huge, huge, like, epic sounding, like, metal. Uh, really good band. A lot of stuff I'm listening to currently is just like, a lot of garage rock that like everybody else I think knew or a lot of people that are in that thing know but I never really got that uh, acquainted with like the uh, the Oblivions and the Space Shits and stuff like that and like all the bands that came out of those bands you know so like some of the current so like uh, King Con and Barbecue Show is good the Dirt Bombs which has the guy <laughs> that was from the Gories so stuff like that which you know off into another yeah I was uh, we were just uh, some friends we're in we're in Seattle and uh, we stumbled across this band called the Dogs and they're from Japan and uh, they're kind of in the same the same band as like the Melvins Nirvana back in the day like they they totally they nail it they nail it they're like Japanese Japanese and a great CD though it's one thing some, I forgot who I think it was a, some uh, music journalist that said something about like Japanese bands or Japanese musicians are better at like nailing down a style like if they if they decide this is what I want they will you know if they're like we're just going to do straight 50s rock and roll they do it exact if they're like we're going to do well, well, this power metal like from yeah, uh, but I just I just, great. I just like, found Rainbow Rising on vinyl for for seven bucks, and I well wet myself. So yeah, that's one of my I, yeah. I keep going back. To I, I yeah, keep going back to Rainbow and Sabbath. Speaking of which, my my the thing I'm excited about now is if everybody saw the uh, the posts on the Black Sabbath website, it says eleven eleven eleven, and they're doing a uh, press guy. conference at the at the whiskey with Henry Rollins mediating or something to keep them from setting Bill Ward on fire, I guess. But, uh, you know, it's expected they're, they're going to announce a tour or, or a new album or both. So that's pretty much all I'm thinking about. Yeah, that'd be cool <laughs> if it actually happens. Yeah, I'm especially for the new album because I'm like, you know, someone who didn't get to see him the first time around, too young or whatever, but, you know, now I got to see him through the other reunion tours. So... I'd love yeah, to see him you, again, but a new album. With, you saw him with Sammy Hagar singing, so that was with Sammy, yeah. <laughs> the Hagar years of Black Sabbath were horrible. <laughs> yeah, not too many but, people know Hagar actually sang with Sabbath. That's right. Well, it's just in the shower. They were right. on. They were on the radio, and he sang along, right. and, and nobody not liked together. it. No, but they, yeah, and the neighbors <laughs> hated it. But they loved the Gary Sharon period. Yeah. So Ooh. that you know, <laughs> just cut him off, room. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. My job's easy when people talk. Yeah, but, well, you don't have any problems with Lance. Anyone else? New bands? Uh, you know, I was going to bring a list because I'll just draw blanks. Everything I've bought recently, I, you know, I was going into the Sykes thing. I was just going on about the other day. Right. Some uh, John Sykes solo stuff. So it's like all old new stuff to me. Uh, and I don't even know what new is anymore. I don't really pay attention to when they've been around, but, you know, right. uh, Nashville Pussy and stuff. It's more modern era stuff compared to 20 years ago. Or right. Nevermore or something metal like that. But I'm I was, oh, Dragon Force is good, too. They're relatively new. And they're very, like, old school, just power metal, you know, high, like, pure vocals and, like, galloping and, you know. All right. They actually have, uh, they're working on a new album with a new singer right now. With a new singer? Yep. Really? Their singer, I'm not sure, they parted ways. Ah, creative differences, musical differences. Oh, I'm sure something. <laughs> yes, the the <laughs> the official bio reason for everybody. It's like we have this great thing going. We can't have that. We got to break up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, sure. Exactly. It's hard. That's one of the hard ones to get. You know, uh, get through is like the singer. Striper has great new uh, stuff that's new. There's old bands still putting out stuff. Bands like Kings X are still chugging along. I listen to all the time that. Are new, but they still produce. Yeah, still putting out good stuff. There, some bands just too just live. Like, uh, you know, I've heard some of the more recent Slayer albums, and they're pretty good. They're actually really good. But live, it's just they're like crush- you're so crushing. You know, I saw them at the Big Four, and like they just destroyed everybody. Wait Although minute. Dave Mustaine was having a religious moment, I think he was having that in Indio show. I thought he had it was like. 
having an epiphany. They really put on an inspired show, so Megadeth came pretty close to what about Slayer Lulu? on that. I thought it was really Lulu? good. Lulu? Lulu? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I'm going to get uh, Willow Smith so I can rock out in the car like the guy in the commercial. I can whip my hair back and forth. <laughs> what did you think of... What do you think of Smashing Pumpkins? Like some of that double lead stuff. Very that was good. Yeah, very Danny reminiscent of Priest uh, and all the all yeah, the it was very good. harmony stuff's good. Yeah, I thought so. And I, I think I know Corgan was always you know he's a, a huge fan of Priest Dawkin fan. and like a Dawkin fan, Dawkin, really huge really. Dawkin fan. Really. So, but you didn't hear it a lot on the old no. stuff. But like I did notice when we went to see that show, the way that the the, yeah, the, lead, the twin lead guitars were going and stuff, and some of the harmony parts, even kind of like Thin Lizzy. Yeah, he's definitely but, a shredder. I don't think I don't think a lot of people realize just like how uh, crazy good he is as a guitar player. I thought Axel's version of GNR Chinese Democracy was pretty good. Actually. I actually did like it. Yeah, I don't know if too many people. I know a few. I don't know too many people that like Chinese Democracy, but I, I did like it. I like that song. I like the song, anyways. Yeah, there's a few. There's a couple songs. There's a couple, a couple of them. a couple stinkers on it for sure. Uh, there was I don't even remember what the one song is. I think it's the second track, and there's a really corn like guitar part. And you know when I think of like oh you know it's it's a it's a good album, but it's not worth waiting 15 years for or whatever. <laughs> on the other hand, I was like, well, if he'd made it 15 years ago when he started it, it all would have sounded like that. It would have sounded like him trying to be Nine Inch Nails. Or trying I to be thought corn. It was better than the uh, Use Your Illusions, and better the song better. I thought more consistent. Song. Yeah, the, there's the one song, "If the World," which sound to me sounds like uh, sounds like one of those soft rock '70s hits. You know, <laughs> it's like uh, he's always gone for that Elton John thing. Yeah, yeah, it's got a little Elton John to it. So, yeah, I thought there's a to me it's it's weird. Like I think when he's left without those other guys, you know, without uh, the support of guys like Slash, his best songs tend to be the ballads. You know what I mean? As, as far as the stuff he puts out himself or as the right. main drive for us. Have you guys so. listened to the new... Speaking, going back to you mentioned, talking about Megadeth, have you heard their new album? I haven't heard the album, but I've heard really good things. Have you, did you hear it? Is it uh, oh, I have it. It's awesome. Right. You said... Uh, I remember you saying Megadeth's your favorite band, right? Your favorite all-time band? By far. By far. Right. Wow. That was my first... Do you think it holds up like on a scale of... Uh, you know, with the, with the rest of their catalog, do you think it's... One of the one of the best through the history, or yeah, just... I mean, you know, they kind of had that. They, they had that that period where they kind of went commercial, and then they kind of come back. And this one is it, every pretty much every song just has some really good shredding on it. That's I do love to hear that, and I, it's so funny because I like for a long time I was kind of like not not necessarily anti shredder, but like. It, it, very specific, very picky about shred. You know, if it did, if it wasn't melodic or if it didn't have like some kind of emotion or it wasn't just like so aggressive that it kind of overcame it. I didn't like the noodling, but I think you know maybe it's just fondness or nostalgia. Now, anytime I hear someone just wanking on a guitar, like I'm like, that's great. You know, <laughs> like I love to hear like extended shreddy solos that could, even if they go nowhere. Well, so. I, t- I tell you, a band to check out if you haven't before. They're called Lazarus AD and they have a song called Last Breath, and the first minute twenty two is just all just amazing guitar work. Just it's nice. Killer. Yeah, that first Megadeth album like totally changed me. I remember like, we had a friend that was like he was a guitar tech for Mustaine. Uh, even like mm-hmm. kind of like right as that first album came out, and he was just such a cheerleader for that, even mm-hmm. though he was just being pissed on by the band. <laughs> but, yeah, we, uh, nobody believed him though. The, the thing that I thought yeah. was funny with that was I remember That's we were right. watching uh, the guy's name was Whitney. Whitney actually has passed on, so a little yeah. forty ounce to, to Whitney. Uh, but guy. he was always telling us that he was working with with Megadeth as a guitar tech, and we were like, yeah, 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 you know. And we saw at one point there was like a, a MTV interview, and they're talking to Dave Mustaine. And somebody drops an amp or something in the background. They're moving gear, and somebody drops an amp. And Mustaine turns around and was like, "Come on, man, don't pull a Whitney." So yeah. <laughs> they were like the most embarrassing way possible for his story to be proven true. Right? Like, don't oh, pull it. He really is. Like. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, a lot of nights driving around, and my and a friend of mine's Mustang just hitting the cruise, listening to Megadeth. This like cassette. That's how old I am. Yes, cassettes. Yeah, cassettes. But, uh, yeah, that album just totally. Oh, Peace things. Sells is still one of my favorites. Yeah. Well, that's that's probably the one that anchors it for me, and I guess it's maybe like just it's just raw or sounding or something. Like I know that they were one of the the most
most precision oriented thrash bands, which sometimes was good for me and sometimes was not, you know. Um, but David Mustaine, is, I mean, that's people do not give him the credit where to me he built Metallica, right? It gets booted, right? And they simply followed the blueprint up until they got shitty after <laughs> Master. And then Dave continues on every single album for the most part is killer yeah. and he did it twice really right he's I mean, definitely yeah he's definitely outperformed like I mean, in my opinion you know I think he has definitely outperformed them on the last like what four albums oh, versus yeah. each other or whatever yeah. I mean <laughs> way better than or I, I don't even know how many albums they've had since the Black Album yeah. but that but was, that was like, that's like seeing Testament in the clubs back then too oh, like yeah. you just didn't know what like what? How much power was going to come out of that band? Either I remember James and Lars were at the bar to one of our shows at the Stone. That's uh, what Don was saying yeah. too. Yeah, or, or Adrian laughing. or somebody. Was saying, but yeah, yeah, laughing. <laughs> Surely, drinking probably, out of a straw. Psycho <laughs> dog. <dolls. laughs> <laughs> no, I'm both probably laughing at my pants. Is probably what it was. I mean, that's how the scene was back then, right? Yeah, I mean, it was a close community. Okay, so how'd you guys come up with the name of the band, Daniel? I, yeah, I mean, yeah I, again, back to back to this being an <laughs> asshole in the group. Uh, he beats us, so we do whatever. No, he the, says. Na- the name thing's always it's always been a Mother Love Bone song. Yeah, yeah. Dude, their Mother Love Bone does not. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's in the song. No, okay. when I when, when I first like stole these guys, um, yeah, flat like Flash Bastard was the original name, and you know, of course, being. Being naive, I thought I kind of came up with this genius name, but it's it's actually a name of a book, and you know, Zodiac Mind Warps guitar player used the name Flash Bastard, just as like a stage, stage name. name. Yeah. And, uh, oh, well. But yeah, we we had it for you know late eighties through the like you know nine ninety one ninety two, and then uh, a couple years later, another band popped up with the name, and they they did some big stuff like toured with Motley Crue and Scorpions, Scorpions think, and yeah they had a they did get a record out on a on a major I think yeah and this and the, six I think picked them up and, okay. yeah and it was just funny being like we're both you know rock bands and they claimed they were punk and we claimed we were rock but it, it seemed like it was kind of reversed you know because they they seemed a little bit more like I don't know like more New York Dolls Light or something yeah. I mean, uh, well I, I think with maybe more punk in their fashion you know, yeah, in the music. I mean, I don't not but, uh, that it's not in there, but I mean, like more so than we are. I don't think we're very. We look like punks, but we don't <laughs> look like punks. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, when it came when it came and we got back to together in the last year, um, it was kind of up in the air. Like, well, what do we do at this point? Because you know, the other one, off, you know, Flash Bastard as a band is already kind of established past what we've already done. So. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, I don't know if you've ever been in a band where you had to like come up with a name. It's it's like looking for a drummer. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a major pain. Oh, in the it's it's one of the things I hate the most, actually. And the, the endless things of people, you know, writing down lists of names on the back of envelopes of their unpaid bills, and and one person's like, "Well, I like this name," and another person's like, "Well, I don't like it because you know I don't like names that start with the letter S." Or whatever, you know. Right. <laughs> Everyone has their own arbitrary reasons they don't like this name There's or that. There's nothing name. wrong with the Coxman. <laughs> <laughs> How many times I gotta say? But so. I've, I've always been a big fan of like, like, uh, like indie bands and stuff. It, like, there's a contrast to it. Like, you know, like shiny rainbows, and they, then they just end up just like burning your face off with like metal riffs or something. Right. So we're I, like, I was kind of hoping to find a name that would be not so obvious. Like, right. I think I did all right. Yeah, well, no, it's a, one thing is, like, it doesn't sound like we're trying to be tough, which is, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah. What's the name of your band? The Hard Ponies. You yeah. can't even say it, so it and sounds it's, it's tough. Kinda, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's the Hard Ponies. It's diverse you know? enough, too, like, no matter, like, what crowd you get into, somebody's either going to make fun of it or like it, so. Uh, at least it gets responses. A friend of mine was in a band called uh, Unicorn Stickers, and he came up with the name, and I said, why unicorn stickers? What you know? What's your reasoning on that? He's like, well, everybody I know, the reason they get in a band is because they want to meet girls, and what do girls like? Unicorn stickers. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. Maybe a hard pony is kind of like a unicorn sticker. Yeah. <laughs> but is the pony always hard? That's the question. <sighs> depends how much Viagra it's had. I'm sorry. What's that, Ron? I said it depends how much Viagra it's had. 
Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Especially it's, these days. But see, it's not yeah. supposed to be about the pony's cock. I, <laughs> you guys, I know Olby meant he was tough. Right, yeah. Well, he's, he's trying to be tough, but he is still just a little pony. Yeah. It's kind of like my dog. He thinks he's a German Shepherd, but he's a Chihuahua Pomeranian. It, it, it's also kind of <laughs> paying a little homage to our roots, because one of the very first places we played... Uh, was uh, yes. Pony Express Pizza. It was a pizza we, parlor that had bands. It was uh, a pizza parlor that had bands, and that was kind of where we first... Legendary in the beer. First kind of yeah. started. Yeah. So we wanted to kind of like do something. We thought Pony, let's do Pony, and Pony was taken, and then it seemed like every other offshoot Iteration. of Pony w- yeah. uh, was taken, so it kind of yeah. funneled down to... Yeah, Pony uh, Express was a big, for, for Bay Area, for, at least for the South Bay and Peninsula yeah. Bay Area, Pony Express was kind of like a legendary touchstone, because it was like the training wheels for everybody, you're getting ready, you know, you want to get into the clubs and yeah, stuff, yeah. And they're good like, go, go good. play a Pony C-Hags Express, the, the, the Sea Hags, the Mummies, Mr. T, Green, T uh, Mr. T Experience, yeah, did Green Day, I can never yeah, confirm that, they did, okay. So, you know, yeah, a lot of bands played through there, and, you know, a lot of bands that maybe only played one gig played there because they could for a certain time they would just book anybody you know right. and it you know it's weird because you look at it at that, at that point that was like the place you play just to kind of get your shit together and then go on and play like actual clubs you know um but looking back on it it was a place that had like you had like 100 to 200 people in this little place and there was a built-in crowd like you bring your own fans or whatever but there was also a built in crowd of regulars I don't think I ever saw that place with less, less than like 50, 60 people in there oh yeah and, you yeah. know and, and they paid yeah, yeah you actually made money yeah. in those and games, you got free so. pizza yeah. <laughs> and you got free pizza yeah. so that was good um, but that was yeah that was part of our history I think that's what made started the you know Pony as part of the I don't know. I'm guessing because Danny came up with it. No, I, I just wanted you guys to hate me even more. <laughs> well, that's not possible. Well, I, I appreciate the the story because I tell you what, it's I always ask bands that question, and and like when I, just when I asked Van Canto that question, the dude's like, "Yeah, we needed something that was short and would fit on a poster, good." <laughs> I mean, that was the answer. That's short and to the point, right? <laughs> And then I, I have bands like you guys that, you know, actually have a story behind the name, so that's cool. Yeah, with a name like that, you kind of we kind of need a story. <laughs> you need yeah, something, yeah, you need some sort of explanation. <laughs> but I, I do like the fact that, like, you know, it's like, I, I, you know, of course, especially when I was a teenager, I loved bands that were over the top about trying to sound badass. You know, you had Iron Maiden, it's named after a medieval torture device, you know. Motorhead's, like, slang for a speed freak, you know. And then all the devil names, Black Sabbath and, you know. But at the same time, I was like, you know, you get to a point where, like, every band in the world, especially if they play any kind of hard rock or metal or anything like that, their name sounds like they're trying to be tough, like they're trying to be badass. And I'm just like, why not not try? <laughs> then, it, then it, you know, it only goes up from there. Well, it's like Rob Halford, right? What's more metal than, than screwing a guy? Well... <laughs> What's more metal than... Uh, my response like usually is just that the Foo yeah. Fighters were taken. The Foo Fighters, because yeah. you really wanted to be the Foo Fighters. <laughs> Boy, they're green no, fun. but it's just a, you know, just a obscure, just... It's obnoxious, that's enough for uh, us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was the whole purpose of Flash Bastard. Like, let's just yeah. throw something out there that people probably won't like. Right. Yeah. And at the time, it's so weird to think about it now because it's like, you know, standards have changed. I think mean, you can say shit on TV, right? South Park did the episode where they said it like 500 times in a row. Bastard was kind of a curse word. Like, it was yeah. like light cursing, you know? There was always question of like, well, if we go forward with uh, Flash Bastard, will they play us on the radio? Will they say the name on the radio? Well, you know, it's like the marquee at the, I think it was the stunt we were Flash Bass Star, right? They, they didn't want to play Yeah, they didn't want to put the D on. Yeah. <laughs> I see my boy Tom Keith is on uh, on Facebook there giving us a shout out for mentioning the Pony Express. Tom was one of our other drummers. Um, that, I don't. This may be important to nobody but me, but I, I did want to say for the the other people that were in the band at one point, there was Stephen Austin, Tom Keith, and Darren Brooks all played drums for us at one point, and they were all good cats and good players, yeah. and they're all so oh, friends. Oh, and Kenny Arnoff. Hey, Kenny Arnoff, no, and uh, the ghost <laughs> the ghost of John Bonham played with us as well, which is good. Um, I was kind of dead. Yeah, that's what's gonna. Yeah, yeah that's well. good. Uh, but no, I just I don't know. I just wanted to thank those guys because they were part of the band at one point. Part of the history, helped, yeah. Yeah, part of, yeah, part of the part of that whole rock scene back then too. 
Well, that's yeah. awesome because the history is important. So. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's weird when you look back at stuff and you're just like, you know, eh, maybe this is just you know old fart, th- old fart thinking. But like, every little piece seems to be important to me. I'm like, I remember when we played at this place and that. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of history. Danny and Danny and Lance, I think, met in kindergarten. Kindergarten, and, and then um, I re- I met Lance and Danny in junior high. So and then Jim came on. Jim's the new kid the at, new kid what, 22 block. years or so, 23 years. Yeah. And Jim actually played the way I met Jim or the way that we found Jim originally was he uh, was playing with one of my high school buddies in a band or that he, my high school buddy, had joined his band, Deja, which was another Pony Express uh, alumni. staple alumni. So um, my friend Dan Spray. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Basically, we are shills for the Pony Express because that's what this whole interview is about now. We're like, oh, well, they don't exist. They don't exist anymore. So we're trying to sell. Yeah, we're trying to sell something that isn't even there. So speaking of selling, Rob, you yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Say about the CDs or, I, I think I. Uh... iTunes CD Baby. Yeah, iTunes CD Baby. Rob trunk. Facebook, my trunk. Yeah, your trunk. Just don't come to my house. No, why are you taking away the invitation? <laughs> Yeah, you can't back out on that now. They're going to be beating on your door. Yeah. I think they, they probably already are. You're going to get home and you're going to find that. All four <laughs> listeners know where you live. Yeah. Yeah. No, Cameron does not know where I live. Oh, get a sponge. <laughs> oh, but he does. Cameron's got Google Maps. He's going to find your house. <laughs> okay. Anything else that you want to tell the world about you guys? Danny likes to wear women's underwear, but not as much as we like him to wear women's Thank underwear. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Finally, and I, it's out. Right. <laughs> that isn't, that a, isn't that a big, uh, big <laughs> weight off your shoulders? Have we talked about music at all? I know <laughs> you, you keep trying to steer us to it. I have, were we avoiding that question earlier? Really? No. Right, so where do you um, want to get out? I want to get out that I, I really want people to hear the album because I'm beyond proud of it. It's a... a, a Something 20 years in the making for us. Uh, it's getting one gig out of the reunion was huge for me, and just uh, getting back together and seeing you guys. But then to record the album and get the stuff to people is huge. And I think it's it's honest to goodness hard rock that people don't get to hear as much anymore. And so I, if they go sample it, they may dig it. I, I think it's it's pretty huge. So I'd love our, to check it out. Our philosophy has always been: let's just do this and see what happens. And it hasn't yeah. really proven us wrong. Even starting back from the you know early Pony days of starting there and getting bigger shows and playing with national acts, and it, it just uh-huh. keeps growing. So we're just kind of doing this and seeing what happens. You yeah. know? Yeah. Well, our very first show, in fact, was uh, not. I wouldn't say a joke, but it was all. It was going to be a one-off. And uh, Jim was not yet part of the band, but his our friend and his kind of protege, his drum protege at the time, Stevie Austin, was our drummer for that first gig. And he was moving, um, so we knew he wasn't going to be our permanent drummer. But we're like, let's get together, we'll do one show, and that's that. And, you know, we had fun, so we're like, all right, once, once Stevie left, we're all like, let's keep going, let's get another drummer and let's do it. And uh, it's just kind of the same way the reunion happened, was like, let's get together and do one reunion show, you know, just for old time's sake. But we found that we really like the songs, and, you know, most of us have been in a lot of bands over the years, uh, but there was something about it that, you know, the songs we did together we really liked, and it, to us it felt like a shame, I, you know, like, we wrote these songs, we're happy with them, we're proud of them. You know why not put them out? And well, it's honest. I mean, it's honest. You come see us. It's an honest show. People have a good time because we're having a good time, and it's no, you know, bullshit. It's just a good. Yeah, it's not. It's not posturing. It's just. It's just, like Jim says. It's just honest. It's a good chemistry. It's always been a good chemistry. And the friendships. It, I think. You know. I think it conveys on the stage. Yeah. You know. Hopefully, it conveys to the CD too. So check out the CD and come to a show. That's what we <laughs> want to tell people. That's the the That's big it. message. It's the it's the same message rock bands have been. <laughs> It's what Chuck Berry was saying. You know. Exactly. <laughs> and tune into Metalhead Radio and tune into my show, and you'll get to hear their songs. That's right. Yeah. And a lot of other great music. Or I've discovered request. a lot of bands already just in the short time I've been listening to Metalhead Radio. So, yeah, I want to thank you and the rest of the guys there for what you guys do. Yeah, yeah and, great job. You know, especially, I mean, on a personal note, we appreciate you playing us, and I appreciate all the great stuff I've heard, you know, that uh, – 
maybe I wouldn't wouldn't have discovered without listening to your program. So and I hope I don't get beat up by some real metalheads. <laughs> yeah, they're like, wait till we find those hard yeah, ponies. Oh boy, we'll you show them. Well, we'll and I have to, but, but thank you for you know sitting down and talking with us too. I mean, you took the step of you know listening to the. You know the album, and, and thanks for your, yeah. you know, props, and you know, getting us on here. Hell yeah, it's my, it's my pleasure, guys. My pleasure. Thank you. I'll definitely like you on Facebook now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God, I will sleep well now. <laughs> Rob, when are you gonna like? You, you don't even respond to my friend request. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, look at what you say about me. Come on, man. Okay, that's deep yeah. dark secret. <laughs> Okay, so, so can you guys? Uh, here's where I, here's where I uh, here's I do my shameless thing. Think I can get you guys to send me a physical copy of the CD or what? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, just wonder, we got like forty in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just near snow because we can, we can hook you up. <laughs> well, yeah, I would like one for my personal yeah. use, and um, if you guys could all sign it, that would be like killer to me. Nice, yeah, of course. Yeah. That way, uh, that way, when you guys hit it super big, I can say, "Yep, I got their CD." Right. Nice. <laughs> like, Look at this, and it works as a great coaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when everything goes like direct, you would, you know, to downloads only, and you'd be like, "I got this," you know, the last CD made in America by anybody <laughs> ever. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah I, item. So I got one more thing to ask you guys. Uh, can you guys make some a couple radio tags for me? Because that would be very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do we just do them here? Yep, just do right here. Yeah, I have this recording, so. Cool. Um, do you want to just give us a cue when to go, or just or just do? Just go. Hey, it's, this is the Hard Ponies. You're listening to Metalhead Radio. I don't know. Good job. You like that? <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, one like that for the station, then if you can do one for my show. All right. Yeah. Um. Or do we just say just DJ Rem show? Or I forget if there's a title for the show. Just, just say DJ Rem. That's cool. Okay. You guys want to chime? Should we gang yeah, vocal it? Pretend yeah. we're like in. All right. Just do your thing. And, no, just do your thing. Danny laughed at me last time. Yeah. Really? I was. <laughs> that's just laughter support. <laughs> Love the laughter support. <laughs> that's what it always is. I'm not laughing with you. I'm no, laughing no, in no. your face. Don't kick the <laughs> give, give this guy. All right. Uh, this is the Hard Ponies. You're listening to DJ Rem on Metalhead Radio. That was like Casey Kasem. Oh, that was good. Now I'm gonna talk, good. And I'm going to talk shit about you 2 or something, and it, then Negative Land's going to sample it and put out an album with me. Or the Happy asshole. Hard Ponies and go fuck yourself. The Happy yeah. Hard Ponies. Yeah, that's going to be, when we ha- if we have to change the name again for some reason, we'll be the Happy Hard the Ponies. The Happy Hard Ponies. Yeah. <laughs> Do those work for the tags, or were those idiotic? Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's cool. I'll, I'll cut them out, and, and I'll even, uh, yeah, that, that other thing, I'll probably cut that out, too, and use that on my show. <laughs> Nice. Is there any way we can get a copy of this? Well, it's going to put it up. Oh, okay. I mean, got it. sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off on that. There's Man, I, I can't even talk in my own interview. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, I don't like <laughs> Let me Let me take this one for a second. No, me. No. <laughs> let me tell you about me. I was yeah. thinking about me today. Hey, hey Rem, I was worried we weren't going to be able to fill 40 minutes. I must have been out of my mind. I got, I got the, the I'm always, I'm here. worried I can't fill anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not without the Viagra. Yeah. We already covered this. Yeah. Just pony. The Viagra. Sad pony. <laughs> sad pony. Yeah. Why did we call it sad pony? <laughs> it was taken, wasn't it? It was taken. <laughs> it was too close so, to home. Like, some emo band somewhere has oh, a fucking sad pony. That's a freaking fallout pony. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously though, this is this is why I, I like when an interview just turns into a one big old bullshit session. That's beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Let, that's, that's what you got. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, that's the best kind. I mean, the whole thing is, you know, I I like to get to know the guys I'm listening to. I think it's cool to get to actually know you guys and, you know, not just, okay, yeah, I like the way they sing, but, you know, what they're about. So, uh, and it gets a lot more honest when people can just sit around and bullshit, so. <laughs> well, I'm very honest. We're very honest. Yeah. Yeah. Very honest. <laughs> As you can tell, no lack of honesty. Maybe too honest. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to talk. And Oh, to answer the question that I never answered because somebody tried to answer it for me. Um, Sorry. That happens. It'll, yeah, I will, um, I'll will. i cut all this out, the interview part, and I'll uh, actually upload it to YouTube later this week. 
Nice. Oh, awesome. Great. Then I'll I post- hope they don't look fat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll post a link on your on your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. Thank Do you. Thank you, Spencer. My larynx Do is I swollen. Sound- Do I sound fat? Do I, I sound, sound fat, fat in these jeans? <laughs> Do I sound- <laughs> oh, don't worry. I can make you skinny. Oh, I love it. You're going to Photoshop the interview. You're going to get Exactly. Like, <laughs> audio shop. Yeah, audio shop. Yeah. There we go. But well, we do have, we have faces for radio, so this is perfect medium for what we're trying to do. Yes. <laughs> All right, well, killer, man. Thank you so much. Yeah.